In 1906, U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt won the Nobel Peace Prize but rejected the prize money. Let's see why. In the previous video, we looked how the U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt made Japan and Russia start peace negotiation in Portsmouth. Although Japan was winning in the war, it was also suffering and Russia knew that. So, Pite, the Russian chief delegate, made up his mind to be strong at the table. On August 12, 1905, New York Times reported that Oyama was ready to fight again with Russia. Oyama was the Japanese commander-in-chief in Manchuria. There were 600,000 of soldiers on each side. A media in the United Kingdom reported once the Portsmouth talk proves to be in vain, the war would begin immediately. Meanwhile, the Japanese chief delegate, Komura, was sitting in a conference room with his counterpart. Fans were spinning and delegates were smoking. Both sides agreed that the Korean Peninsula is already conquered by Japan. But we would respect Russia's national interest in the Korean Peninsula. Also agreed to withdraw their troops from Manchuria and return the land to China. But they started struggling with Sakhalin Island, that was not fertile and was full of mountains. Then why was Japan interested in the land? It was as large as Ireland, but it had natural resources such as natural gas, oil, coal, and steel. For years, Japan and Russia were arguing about the island. It was Japan who was occupying the land during the Portsmouth negotiation. Legally, the land belongs to Russia. You are just occupying by force. It's just a colony to Russia, but it is a pivotal area for Japan. So, both sides agreed to talk about the land later. Meanwhile, as the delegates were talking, things got changed in Russia. The people were angry about Japan's harsh demands and started insisting to rather resume the war. In fact, Vite told US media about Japan's demands and media in Russia delivered that information to Russian people. Also, the two sides were struggling with war indemnity. In Asia, it was reasonable the defeated country should pay indemnity. So, Japan insisted Russia to compensate. But in Europe, war indemnity could be considered only when the capital is conquered or the whole territory is invaded. Japan just won some battles. Compensation? No kidding. For over a week, two sides could not reach the agreement about war indemnity. Theodore Roosevelt was worried. In his letters to sister and his friend in the United Kingdom, he wrote he was concerned. The Japanese chief delegate Kimura decided to send Kaneko to Roosevelt to change the stalemate. The next morning, Kaneko visited the summer house of Roosevelt in Long Island. Who was Kaneko? He was not involved in the official Japanese delegation. He once studied at Harvard University with Roosevelt and was a friend of him. I'm worried if both Komura and Vite would keep their stance. Agreed, I'm thinking of sending a letter to the Russian Emperor. But before that, I need to respect Vite as he is the official chief delegate here. So, I would invite Rosen as he is trusted by Vite. Who was Rosen? He was one of the Russian delegates and a refined gentleman. He was good at music and fluent in languages including Japanese. He worked as the Russian ambassador to Japan and had a good reputation. On August 19, 1905, Rosen got on a train to meet Roosevelt. It was Saturday and Rosen met the president when he was playing tennis. What about conceding the thousand part of Sakhalin Island if Russia has no intention to give up the land? And let the war indemnity issue to be discussed later. Then Russia would save its face. No way, the emperor will say no. 
After a while, a message was sent from the emperor to Vite to stop the negotiation. Vite was frustrated, and Roosevelt tried to make Japan concede more. Roosevelt told Kaneko, demanding compensation is too harsh. We just occupied a small part of the whole Russia territory, Sakhalin Island. Even you keep fighting and win Siberia, the land is useless to you. Roosevelt's ambassador, Mayer, was sent and he met the Russian emperor on August 23rd. It was Wednesday. Delegations of Russia and Japan agreed to suspend the negotiation for three days to discuss with their governments. At 4 p.m. of that day, the U.S. ambassador met the Russian emperor with Roosevelt's letter. Japan is occupying Sakhalin but would concede the northern part of the island to Russia. Though Japan is now financially suffered, if both sides kept fighting, Russia would lose so much. Also, the Russian Navy has no power left to get the whole Sakhalin island back. The US ambassador and the Russian emperor had a meeting for three hours. The emperor said, Russia is willing to compensate, but the amount should be determined by Russia. Also, Russia would consider conceding the thousand part of Sakhalin Island to Japan. Next day, on August 21st, 1905, the Russian foreign minister sent a message to Vite. If Japan concedes the northern part of Sakhalin and demands nothing in return, Russia is willing to sign the peace treaty. The minister emphasized, this is the final suggestion. Delegates of Japan and Russia were sitting in a conference room. They were stressed, exhausted, and heavily smoking. Meanwhile, the Russian foreign minister said to AP that they would neither concede territory nor pay compensation. What? That means there would be battles again? I will send a message to the Russian emperor right away. Please don't fight. Think about the situation. Japan is already occupying the Sakhalin Island. If you two fight again, both Russia and Japan will suffer a lot. Roosevelt thought his plea won't work that much. But things were going on under the table. Japan decided to accept what Roosevelt suggested. Also, one of the Russian delegates wrote in his diary, honestly, we are ready to give up the southern part of Sakhalin Island. In addition, financial corporations in the US, UK, and Germany were. Unless Japan stops fighting, no more money would be supplied to the country. Meanwhile, Japanese government in Tokyo received a message from Kamura. Vita said that the Russian emperor thinks he can defeat Japan as he has more soldiers in Manchuria. So I have no way but to stop negotiating peace as Russia thinks it can fight again. It was 8 p.m. on Sunday, August 27 in Japan. Wait one more day. Next day, August 28th, Japanese government began internal meetings urgently. Also, on the same day, the Russian emperor told Vite, no matter what happens, terminate the peace talk by tomorrow. I would rather fight again than waiting for Japan concession. And on the same day, at 8.25 p.m. in Tokyo, Japanese government sent a secret message to Kamura. Japan achieved its goal regarding the Korean Peninsula and Manchuria, so we may concede little. As Japan is already occupying Sakhalin Island, tell Russia to concede the land. Instead, Japan would not demand compensation. Ask Roosevelt sincerely to conduct the mediate role. And if Russia says no, then we may concede the whole Sakhalin Island. After the message was sent to Portsmouth, a critical information was reported to Japanese government. There was a spy working for the UK in the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The spy recognized that Russian Emperor would be willing to agree to stop fighting only if Japan consists the northern part of Sakhalin Island. A 
Japanese official got the secret information and immediately reported to its government. Japanese Prime Minister said you should risk your life for that information. The government hurried to send a revised message to Gomorrah in Portsmouth. Don't concede the whole island, they only need the northern part of it. The day before the final negotiation, the Russian chief delegate Vite wrote in his diary, I'm so nervous and have no idea what Japan will say tomorrow. If we don't make the deal, millions will die. I keep praying with tears. It was August 29th morning, 1905. Japanese and Russian delegates packed their luggage to go back to their countries. They paid the hotel bills and all ready to leave. Roosevelt, on the other hand, was writing a statement. The peace negotiation failed. At the moment, Vite met Kamura for the last time and put one paper on the table. It said Russia will not pay for the return of Sakhalin Island. Kamura said, give up the Sakhalin Island and Japan will not demand war indemnity. Vite rejected. For some seconds, they were silent, and tears from the eyes of Vite dropped on the final offer paper. Kumura broke the silence. Japan withdraws war compensation demand and returned the northern part of Sakhalin Island to Russia. After six days, Kumura and Vite signed the treaty on September 6. Roosevelt was surprised and happy to hear the news. What happened to the two chief delegates? Kamura became the Japanese foreign minister and Vite became the Russian prime minister. What about Roosevelt? In 1906, for the first time in US history, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. But he rejected the prize money. Why did you do that? I did what I had to do as the US president. 